الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا المسلمين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ويذكر الله سبحانه وتعالى that he teaches us of beneficial knowledge and that he makes us of those people of righteous actions um, this is another book where we are beginning uh, today inshallah which is known as the poem as Mimir now this is the habit of the scholars is that they used to write poetry in explanation of uh, certain topics in you know Islamic literature and sometimes they used to end each verse or each line with a particular letter in order for it to sound as poetic as it is so this is Mimiya of Ibn Qayyim, rahimahullah. It's 180 lines, 180 verses. Every single line ends with the letter Mim. Hence it is called the Mimiya. And this, like I said, is the habit of the ulama. Ibn Taymiyyah has got the Lam Mimiya. So every single line ends with Lam. And there's Ta here and Aha here, respectively with different ulama. Uh, every single line ending with a ta or every single line ending with a ha previously when we did the, the description of Jannah uh, that was taken from the Nuniya of Ibn Qayyim so he's got 5,000 verses in talking about the Aqeel of the Sunnah every single line ending with the letter Nun so this is similar to what we've got here which is the Mimiya of Ibn Qayyim this is 181 lines like I said, every single one of these lines at the end of it ends with the letter Mim. And the topic here, because we are close to Hajj, and as people are frequenting uh, visits for Umrah throughout the year, I thought it would be befitting for us to go through the Mimi of Ibn Qayyim. The Mimi of Ibn Qayyim, rahimahullah, as Ibn Thaymin, rahimahullah, says, what is apparent is that when Ibn Qayyim went to perform Hajj himself, he wrote this poem. And the contents of this poem, he talks about the acts of worship, the feelings, the emotions, the servitude and the humility and the submissiveness that the pilgrim feels when they perform pilgrimage, whether it's Hajj or Umrah. But in actual fact, what we'll do is we'll split this poem up into three segments. And in today's segment, for the first, I believe it's the first 30 lines or something of that nature, he talks about the love that he has for the salaf of this ummah. Meaning, when we use the word salaf, it refers to the Prophet being the imam of them and then the companions, and then the generation after them, and then the generation after them. So the first large number of verses and lines, he just talks about the love that he has for the companions. Then he talks about the actual pilgrimage itself, and he describes, like I said, some of the feelings that the pilgrim goes through of humility, submissiveness, and, and awe, and love, and glorification for their master. And then, in the final part of this poem, so this will be our third segment, inshallah, he talks about something which I feel is missing from a lot of pilgrims. What do you think the third segment would, would be? A person goes for pilgrimage, he's talking about the actual pilgrimage itself, but what do you think the pilgrim reflects on? I've got the contents page here. And our, the, sunnah, the sunnah and methodology of the sunnah and the methodology well that's kind of connected to what we're going to do today so that's the beginning okay so now here I'm going to read the contents page okay so in the beginning what we're going to look at today inshallah is love and the love of those who we follow meaning self-esteem then wasful hal and hujjaj in the lihram the description of the situation of the people who are performing pilgrimage whilst they're in Ihram. The Talbiyah, 
He's got lines of poetry in describing the Kaaba. He's got lines of poetry describing the day of Arafah, Muzdalifah, Yawm al-Nahr, which is the day of Eid. How, the, how he felt, perhaps, because we're not on his level, rahimahullah, whilst performing tawaf. And then, like I said, the final bit, Hal al-Dunya wa qurbu zawaliha. When he was performing Hajj, he's thinking about the Akhirah. He's thinking about how this dunya is escaping him. العيش في الدنيا, living in the life in this dunya, أنها ممر لا مقر. It's something that you are passing by. It's not something that you are going to settle. تذكير والنسيها للساهي الغافل. Advice and a remembering for those people who are negligent. وصف يوم القيامة Description of the Day of Judgment in poetry form الوسيع باشتغال حاله الحياة An advice, a recommendation to spend his life on how to do it and what to engage in whilst he is alive وصف حال أهل الجنة And the description of the characteristics and the situations of the people of Jannah. This is what he is thinking about whilst he's in Mecca. Rahimahullah. So like I said, it is beneficial, but also it's in, it's in poetry form. Uh, and that is for a reason. This shows us the eloquence of the Arabic language. And I would say it's more or less impossible for us to capture everything that he says in the manner that he says it in. So what we will try and do is we'll try and read what he has said from the poem and try our best to translate what he has said, uh, at least in meaning. And I don't think we'll be reading throughout the whole 180 lines, but we'll try and pick out uh, some of the main bits. Now, we've got an explanation here from Sheikh Muhammad Ibn Sal Uthaymeen. And like I said, even if you feel that the Arabic in the poetry is extensive, you'll still benefit from the notes and some of the, you know, the commentary from uh, Sheikh Muhammad Al-Uthaymeen, rahimahullah. Uh, but what I would advise, if you are familiar with the Arabic language, uh, or if you're even learning the Arabic language, is to go back to it and see what you can pick up. Because a lot of it is in Fusha. Some of it uh, is a little bit more difficult, but I think you will still benefit. So he begins, rahimahullah, bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, and this is the way of the ulama, is to begin with the basmalah. Uh, the ulama have said anything which of uh, importance should begin with Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. However, when the ulama discussed whether poetry should begin with Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, some of them came with the conclusion that it is not permissible. Because poetry is not something which is to be um, venerated. So then why does Ibn Qayyim begin with the Basmalah? The correct view in this is that if the poetry is good and it is of benefit and the contents of it is good and khair and ilm, then you begin with Bismillah because that's the purpose of us beginning with Bismillah. But like I've said, some of the ulama, especially from the time of the Salaf, had a dislike to beginning with Bismillah because we did not teach him poetry and there was no need for us to teach him poetry. Messenger of Allah. So it begins with Bismillah and Rahim. إذا تلعت شمس النهار فإنها أمارة تسليم عليكم فسلموا. He begins again. Like I said, there's a lot of depth in the language that he is using, but he begins in talking about salam upon the messenger, صلى الله عليه وسلم, and the companions. So he says, when the sun comes up during the day, and this is. An amara taslim alaykum fasallimu. This is an example of how I will continue to send salam upon them. Later on, we'll see Ibn, uh, Ibn Uthaymeen rahimahullah giving us a benefit where he says, All of this, we can see it from the beginning, but he says, All of this is an example of the love that Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah had in his heart for the Salaf al Salih. So he's saying here, every day when the sun comes up, Salam upon them. Salam min rahmani fi kulli sa'atin wa rawhu wa rihanu wa fadlu wa an'amu Salam from al-Rahman in every portion of that day 
وَرَوْهُ وَرَيْهَانَ and comfort and relaxation and a virtue and favor for who ala ala sahbi wal ikhwani wal walidi wal ula ra'uhum bi ihsan fajadu wa an'amu upon the companions and the generations that came from them from the brothers and the children and the offspring and how they have superseded us and how they have gone forth with goodness and virtue from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then he says in line 5 ulaika atba'u an-nabi wa hizbuhu wa lawla hum ma kana fil ardi muslimu these are the followers of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his party and had it not been for them on earth there would not be one single muslim you know what i mean rahimahullah this is a interesting benefit the author he says lawla lawla basically means had it not been for them are we allowed to say had it not been for them or do we have to attribute favors to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in all cases and perhaps you might even find some people falling into extremism in this or waswasa in this had it not been for you i would have done such and such how would it not been for you I would have had such and such. Are we allowed to say such things or not? And if they mean Rahimahullah, he's basically saying that there are three situations when it comes to a person saying, had it not been for. The first one is when you make a cause what is not a cause. And this is not allowed. And this could even reach to the level of shirk. So for example, if a person has an amulet on, and he says, had it not been for the amulet, I wouldn't have been protected from some kind of calamity. He's made this thing which is not a cause into a cause, and that's not permissible. The second scenario is combining the name of Allah with the creation. Had it not been for you and Allah, had it not been for Allah and you, such and such would not have happened, or whatever. He says that's not allowed because of the wording. And when you study Kitab al-Tawheed, you will see that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was particular in this and saying, no, you can't combine even in wording. Look how he came sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to protect Tawheed and to save us from shirk. Just even in the wording, if a person was to say, if it wasn't for him and Allah, that's partnership in wording, even though that's not his aqeedah. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, أَتَجْعَلْنِي لِلَّهِ نِدًّا Have you made me a partner with Allah? Kul mashallah wahda. Say Allah alone, mashallah. Therefore, Ruthaymin rahimullah is saying here if you're making into a cause, if it is legitimately a cause, and you're mentioning the name of Allah, then you must use the word and then. Had it not been for Allah and then you. Something like that. That now becomes permissible for you to say. The first one is not respectful to Allah, but it is not shirk, inshallah. And now we've got the third scenario, is what the Shaykh is saying here, لَوْلَاهُمْ Had it not been for them, the companions, they would, not be on any, they would not be on earth, not one single Muslim. Can we now say that? Now, Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah is showing his respect and love for the companions because they are the ones who carried on the religion, the Sharia, and the Qur'an, and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This small group of people had students come to them from all around the world and they themselves traveled around the world and they spread Islam and they made Islam settle radiallahu anhu so what Ibn Qayyim is saying here is absolutely correct and factual this Quran would not have reached us without a sanad the sunnah would not have reached us without a sanad the ahkam of the sharia would not reach us without a sanad therefore everything goes back to them so now what is he saying here is that correct the answer is correct can we say it like that Ibn Uthameen says the third scenario is that if there is an actual cause then it's permissible for you to say that you are now connected to that cause if it wasn't for the doctor I would still be ill is that correct the answer is correct obviously it's better for you to say Allah is the one that gave me shifa and then the doctor but we are talking about what we normally say on a regular basis as human beings is it correct? He says, Ibn Uthaymeen, it is correct. What's the dalil for that? 
In Sahih Bukhari, and in Muslim, agreed upon, the Messenger of Allah وسلم, after Abu Talib passed away, he says, Lola ana, had it not been for me, meaning himself, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, lakana fi dark al asfari min al nar. Abu Talib would have been in the lowest, hev- lowest part of the hellfire. So, what does that mean? And the Messenger of Allah will intercede on his behalf Yom al Qiyamah and he will not be in the lowest level of the hellfire. Therefore, linguistically, can we say, had it not been for you and because of you and etc., then the answer is yes. Line number nine. لِكُلِّ مْرِئِ مِّنْهُمْ سَلَامٌ يَخُصُّهُ For every single one of them, there is a specific salam that is due. يُبَلِّغُهُ أَدْنَى إِلَيْهِ وَيَنْعَمُ And for them, they will reach at least the lowest of them, and they will find a reward in it. فَيَا مُحْسِنٌ بَلِّغْ سَلَامِي وَقُلْ لَهُمْ مُحِبِّكُمْ يَدْعُوا لَكُمْ وَيُسَلِّمُ he then says, Rahimullah, in this line, how amazing and how great is it that I can send my salam to them so I can say to them this salam that I want to, you know, to pass on to them because of my love for them, I will supplicate for them for blessings and peace. Then he says, Rahimullah, Wumal'aru. إِلَّا بُغْدُهُمْ وَتِنَابُهُمْ Shame and fault can only be upon those people who hate them and stay away from following them. وَحُبُّوا إِدَاهُمْ ذَلِكَ آرُمْ وَمَأْثَمُ And loving anyone who was enmity towards them, this is a shame and a sin. أَمَا وَالَّذِي شَقَّ الْقُلُوبُ وَأَوْدَعَ الْمَحَبَّةِ فِيهَا هَيْثُ لَا تَتَسَرَّمُ He said, as for me, if you were to open up my chest and look into my heart, the love that I have for them the love for that I have for them uh, is immense and anyone without that kind of love can never be grateful towards them Ibn Thaymin rahimahullah is saying that this is correct what Ibn Qayyim is saying here is correct loving the salaf, loving the companions is not something which is shameful loving the companions is an honor and a reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is because the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us in a hadith that a person will be with who he loves and if you love them, then you will be with them in Jannah. But Ibn Qayyim, in this, uh, on, in this verse here, he's saying what is actually shameful is a person doesn't like them, doesn't want to be like them, doesn't emulate them. And what's worse, he hates them. And with this, Ibn Qayyim is showing to us how he longs to be with them. He says, if you open up my heart, you will see a heart that is grateful towards them and full of love. How can a group of people love them and claim to love them and he doesn't follow them? How can a group of people be grateful without loving them and following them? This is the most honorable form of love. Not the love for uh, the natural kind of love that we have. Not the love for the dunya. هَذِهِ أَشْرَفُ أَنْوَالْ مُحَبَّةِ This is the most virtuous type of love that a person can have when it comes to creation with creation. This is because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put a reward in this love and when a person has that reward he is attaining the love of Allah as well subhanahu wa ta'ala. As for the natural form of love that we have, we might not attain the love of Allah, or maybe we won't. هَذِهِ أَشْرَفَ أَنْوَاءَ مُحَبَّةَ أَلَّتِي يَتَمَنَّ الْإِنسَانَ أَنَّ اللَّهُ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى يَدْعَهَا فِي قَلْبِهِ And on top of that, this is a love that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts in the heart of the believer 
and you don't really have a choice in it. Why? Because this love here is connected to guidance. This love here is connected to guidance. So what Nuthaymin is actually saying here is the truth. Adhi Ashraf Anwar Muhammad. The love for the Salaf is the most honorable type of love that a person can have. Walida Ibn Uthaymin continues to say, and based on that, La Yunkin and Tajid Ahadan Yahib Allah Azawajal it's not possible for a person to say, I love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that then he will not follow what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us to follow. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah Al Imran, Qul in kuntum tuhibbun Allah, fattabi'uni. Say if you love Allah, then follow me, meaning the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So what did the Salaf do? They loved Allah, what did they do? They followed the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Nuthaymin is making actually a very strong point here in commentary of what Ibn al-Qayyim is actually saying here. That this is actually the best type of love that a person can have when it comes from creation to creation. And in this ayah, if you are truthful, in kanad sadiqun, if he is truthful, then he will follow the Messenger. As for many people, they say, I love Allah and I love the Messenger. I believe in Allah and I believe in the Messenger. And he will probably even see him crying, I love Allah, I love the Messenger. When you see him crying, and then after his crying, you will find him from being the most disobedient of people. You will find him not following the Salaf. And what they mean is saying here, فَهَذَا كَذِبَ This is clear that this is a lie. And the reason why? Because he has failed to follow the Salaf. فَالْمِيزَانَ الَّذِي لَا يُمْكِنْ أَنْ يَبْخَسْ هُوَ إِتِّبَاءَ الرَّسُولِ The scales of you proving your love to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is how much you will follow the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. فَكُلَّمَا رَأَيْتُ الْإِنسَانِ تَبِعْ لِلرَّسُولِ فَاعْلَمْ أَنَّهُ أَحَبَّ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَهَذَا يَعْنِي أَنَّهُ يُحِبُّ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى وَاللَّهُ تَعَالَى يُحِبُّ May Allah make us of these people. Uthameen Rahimu Allah says, If you see a person following the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then have firm insight and certainty and knowledge. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves this person and he loves Allah. This is because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not put in a person to follow the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam except if Allah loves him. وَأَثْمَرِ اتِّبَاءَ مُحَبَّةُ اللَّهِ فِي قَلْبِهِ And from the fruits of you following the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is that you will love Allah in your heart. فَهُنَا سِلْسِلَ There is a connection. There has to be a connection. Therefore, nobody can claim to be a follower of the Salaf. And nobody can claim to love Allah and His Messenger without that connection. محبت الإنسان ينتج أنها اتباع الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم The love that a person has for Allah, which now is an act of worship, but also now with the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم, it has to come about with you following Him صلى الله عليه وسلم. This is also now a fruit of you loving Allah and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showing acceptance to you. <coughs> then Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah continues. Just a few more lines and then inshallah. وَحَمَّلَهَا قَلْبُ الْمُحِبِّ وَإِنَّهُ لَيَدْعُفُ أَنْ حِمْلِ الْقَمِيسِ وَيْأَمُ He says, rahimahullah, the heart that holds on to this love is a heart that is a true heart. And that heart that is holding on to it finds it in a point of weakness whilst he is wearing this garment of love in his heart. Why? Because now, as Ibn Thaymin Rahimullah says, is that this love that you have for Allah and that you have for the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and you have for the following of the Salaf al Salih, it creates humility and respect. And that humility and respect actually creates weakness within the servant. It creates humility within the servant. 
So the closer you get towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the weaker you become in front of Him. The more subservient, more humble, the more awe you have of Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَذَلَّلَهَا حَتَّى اسْتَكَانَتْ لِسَوْلَتِي الْمَحَبَّةِ لَا تَلْوَى وَلَا تَتَلَعْثَمُ I'm not even sure how to translate what he's saying here because it's so uh, it's so poetic, rahimahullah. What does that mean, though, rahimahullah? He says, now this is a really interesting benefit. Ibn Al Qayyim, rahimahullah, is saying in these in these verses that when a person has love towards a thing, you will find them having some kind of humility and weakness towards that thing. And we have that in our natural love, let alone in our love that we we're talking about here when it comes to acts of worship. When you are with your family members, it could be with your friends, it could be, I don't know, it could even just be something that you desire, as in that when it comes to particular foods, you could be just weak and just, I love it. That's how we are when it comes to love. Ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah, is saying here, this is the nature of love. But now, when it comes to love, which is the most honorable form of love, is the love for Allah and the Messenger and the Salaf al Salih. But this is what love does to people. And he gives us an example of an event that took place between two companions in Sahih al Bukhari. He says there was a man called Mughira and a woman called Barira. Mughira was married to Barira. He loved her a lot. But Barira did not love him back. They were married. But she didn't want him. So she comes to the Messenger of Allah وسلم, asking for separation. So the Messenger of Allah وسلم, says to Mughira, leave her and let her carry on with her life. She, do, he doesn't, she doesn't love you, she doesn't want to be with you. Now here, Ibn Thaymin is giving us the point here. Mughira His name is not Mughira, sorry, Mughith Apologies Mughith, he used to love her so much He used to walk around behind her Around all of Medina Crying to her and asking her and begging her, please come back to me, keep coming back to me, and let's remain in this nikah. The Shaykh is saying here, in this story you can see here, that this man loves the woman. When he loves the woman, what happens? He now has a level of submission, and humility, and weakness. So the Shaykh is saying here, what Ibn Al-Qaim is saying here is true. If you open up the heart of Ibn Al-Qaim, this is what he is saying about himself, all you will find is love. How can you be grateful without this kind of love? And that love now puts a person in that situation where he finds himself fully subservient towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and accepting anything which comes from the Messenger of Allah sallallahu and the Salaf of this Ummah. لأنتم على قرب الديار وبعدها أحبتنا إن غبتم أو حضرتم. Here again poetry, but here what he is saying, you have moved on. O Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم, you have moved on. The Salaf have moved on, and how far you are away in a different land from where I am. But my love for you will continue whether you are away from me or whether you are in my presence. Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah is saying here, these lines are showing us the love that Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah has for the Salaf. Because what he is saying here is that there is actual pain that he is experiencing in being away from the Messenger of Allah وسلم. There is actual pain that he is experiencing in not being amongst the Salaf al Salih. So 
So what he is saying here is that you will remain as my loved ones even though you have departed. And I'm going to be patient until I meet you again. This is the first section of this poetry. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his pardon for not giving it justice. In the next section, he now begins looking at the situation of the person when he is performing the pilgrimage. أَمَا وَالَّذِي حَجَّ الْمُحِبُّونَ بَيْتَهُ وَلَبَّوْ لَهُ إِنْدَ مُحَلِّ وَأَحْرَمُوا They have performed, or they are performing the hajj, and they have a love towards the house, and they are performing the talbiyah, لَبَّيْكَ اللَّهُمَّ لَبَّيْكَ And they have worn the ihram, and they have exposed their heads. Their heads. Uh, you know, it's still common practice for Muslims in many countries, not just Arab countries, to wear something on your head. And as he will go on to continue, that this is now a sign of humility and subservience towards their Lord, that they have taken off everything in front of him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like I said, inshallah, this is the next segment of the book, and inshallah we'll be looking at this. We only learn next week. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he makes us of those who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves. And he makes us of those who follow the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he gives us acceptance. And that when he resurrects us, that he resurrects us with these people that have preceded us who have attained the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Barakallahu fiqh. Barakallahu fiqh. Barakallahu fiqh. Barakallahu fiqh. Yeah, there's no more.